advertising background definitely helped in in the round with setting up Innocent, both by what it taught me to do and both what it taught me not to do. So in terms of the positive stuff that I learned from it was the the fun, fundamental importance of always thinking about it from the consumer's perspective. Work out what it is that you want them to do and then work out how you can get them to do that. So most businesses, I don't think instinctively think about the consumer, but we have that absolutely brainwashed into us that it's always about what's the insight, what's the need, what can you tell or do for someone to get them to do what you want them to do. The thing that I learned also in the negative though, it was an organisation that didn't really have, seem to have a clear sense of purpose. It was about let's win the account, let's make some adverts, let's win the account, let's make some adverts. And of course that is what you've got to do, but that isn't the why you've got to do it. And I felt that that organisation would have done much better if it had a sense of purpose beyond merely chasing the next ad campaign or the next award. Um, and I think in, in this case it's sort of proven to be correct because there's an organisation that hasn't done well over the last decade, decade, or, decade or so. So yeah, good things and less good things. I think you have got to manage it because if you've got a business that's successful it will be all, all encompassing and if you've got a business that's not successful it will be all encompassing. So either way you're going to need to there will always there will be an infinite number of demands of the business, so you're going to have to find a way to make sure that it's not taking too much out of you. Now, for me, that was simple. From the beginning, we just said we're not going to work weekends. And at the, when we first said that, we said, "Oh, is that a bit naive? We're we going to have to." Everything is what you make it. We said we weren't going to work weekends, and I can now, after 15 years, count on two hands the amount of weekends that we did work over that 15-year period. So it, it was possible. It meant we worked harder during the week, but that was my way of staying sane. Two days, refresh. Don't think about it, don't talk about it, do something else. Get out, get outdoors, that's the second thing keep me sane, right? Everyone's best memories in life tend to be when they've been outdoors doing something, so whatever it takes, get outside. As a leader, the worst thing I've ever had to do is stand up in front of my company and explain that because we got some things wrong, we're going to have to let people go. And as an entrepreneur, it's about growth, it's about creating opportunities, so actually having to stand up in front of a room full of people who have trusted you and given their career to the organisation and then having to let some people go. That's the worst thing you can do and obviously it's much worse than, for them than it is for me, although in those situations you've got to work out what's the right thing to do and it was right to let people go, we needed to, it was a business requirement. Then you've got to work out what's the right way of doing it and I can hard and hard say we did it generously, responsibly quickly and people left with their confidence intact, stayed good friends of the business and were looked after as generously as we could given that we were a small startup. Critical factors for success, I think I'm going to steal this from Steve Jobs. I read this thing that he apparently once said which is the most important thing to be successful in business is to make something that people actually want. And that sounds really trite and obvious, but it's what everything comes from. If you've got a product or a service that is hot, that is desirable, that genuinely solves a real need, then your job really then is going to be about marshalling the resources to be able to satisfy that demand. If you don't have that thing, that product or service that's got within it some innate desire, then you're going to spend all your time trying to flog a dead horse. And that's just really boring. So I would be absolutely frenetically focused on making sure that the thing itself is beautiful, wonderful, brilliantly executed and really does deliver against a genuine need a consumer has and solves that need in a better way and a better value way than the competition. Now the future for me is a unknown quantity, as it is of course for everyone, but I've done Innocent for 15 years and absolutely loved it and I really feel it's been like a 15 year university course and it's set me up now for going on to do new things. In the short term I've set up a big uh, large scale public art project called Art Everywhere which is all about turning the nation for two weeks into the world's largest art gallery by taking thousands and thousands of poster sites across the country and putting the greatest works of art ever created by this country on them and we launched that on the 11th of August this year. So that's 
very exciting for me because it's completely different to what I've been doing with a completely new group of people doing things for purely altru altruistic reasons um, and that's been dead exciting and then after that that's going to be my like sort of summer holiday project and then from September myself Adam and John who are the guys we set up Innocent together we've got ourselves a new office we've set up a company called Jam Jar the new office is called the Jam Pot and we're going to sit in the Jam Pot and work out what we want to do next as our own thing and on the side, invest in other people's startup businesses because we want to pass on the business karma that 15 years ago some bloke took a risk on us and put money into our business without him, no innocent, and we want to pass on that sort of bit of business karma to the next generation of entrepreneurs.